steam rises as the sun peers out over the shoulder of Minnesota's greatest lake. Lake Superior is the largest freshwater lake in the world, a sea known for its pristine cold water, but in a warming world, that's changing. On the boat? Yep. Before dawn, a crew boards the Blue Heron. Let's take a look through the vessel. Sure. An old fishing boat converted into a floating lab for research. The University of Minnesota is pretty lucky to have this vessel. This is the uh, largest university owned vessel on the Great Lakes. The Department of Natural Resources checks on the lake's fish populations to manage and support one of the state's great resources and pastimes. How do you see that warm up and climate change impacting the ecosystem and the right. food web in general in Lake Superior? Right, yep. So it's very concerning because if the trends that we see, especially talking Cisco, for about the last 20 or so years, we, we've seen a consistent decline in Cisco abundance in Lake Superior. Research here on one of the world's coldest and largest lakes is certainly nothing new, but what is a new frontier for researchers is figuring out what happens when climate change thaws Superior's frigid legacy. What's happening under the changing ice? It's really amazing. The, the lack of information that we have. Um, but it's difficult when you go out on a lake in the winter, you're pulling sleds, you're, you're augering holes. Cold as heck. Whether it's winter or nearly winter, you'll find UMD PhD student Aliyah Benedict diligently working to figure out why our warming winters matter. Today it's an exciting day. We're covering the entire food web. It's a misconception that winter's not important because previously what the big idea was is that, okay, we study the lake in the, in the summer and then in the winter everything's super cold, everything dies off and it's a step, start set from zero again the next summer absolutely not true. There's a lot of really interesting stuff happening under the ice, very important interactions that actually play into the next summer. So it is a black box, absolutely. Shorter ice seasons essentially alter the food web, something master student Levi Foyt knows from his work, but also as an avid ice angler. Everything seems to be shifting a lot. The fish aren't what they used to be, or the winters, it's not what it used to be. Above the ice, that typically means a shorter ice fishing season, but below it? When fish are used to spawning at ice out, uh, they're spawning too early. So the same way it's confusing you as an angler, it may be confusing the fish. It can be even more confusing for the fish. On a chilly Madison Lake in central Minnesota, they're electroshocking those fish to collect samples. It kind of draws fish in and at the same time kind of stuns them briefly. He'll look at their size, age, and diets to get a baseline, then compare it to winter. The more that we can kind of understand this, the fisheries world, um, the more that we can accurately use our resources, kind of identify areas of concern in these lakes. As students work on the water, professors like oceanographer Jay Austin are back in Duluth at their home base, the Large Lakes Observatory at UMD. This, which is actually an older unit, um, can measure temperature once every two seconds for a year, um, down to about a thousandth of a degree. Austin says Superior has warmed one degree per decade since the 80s making it one of the fastest warming lakes in the world. Temperature is this sort of master control knob on how ecosystems work. Austin's colleague Ted Ozerski, who we saw back here on this boat, says that's churning a number of concerns. If we look at the historical uh, trends, uh, over the last 100 years we lost about 15 days of ice cover. So loss of ice and loss of winter is stimulating these summertime uh, algal blooms. July 2012, the first algae bloom ever recorded on Lake Superior is spotted. About 30 days after a 500 year storm washed zoo animals out of their enclosures, dumping sediment into the lake that could be seen from space. It's by far the cleanest and the clearest um, of all of the Great Lakes. And I think it's size, I mean, it feels like an ocean. Anthropologist John Shepard from Hamlin University was there this summer as six marathon swimmers set a record going from two harbors to Duluth. No wetsuit needed in this balmy 60 degree water, something unimaginable just a short time ago. People everywhere are, are witnessing climate change, no matter where you live. So in this region, I think, you know, some of the changes we're seeing with Lake Superior 
is one of the ways that that comes to life for people. A warming superior opens doors for different types of recreation. Perhaps a longer commercial shipping season. But in the face of these changes under the ice, above it and without it, there's no question Superior's frigid legacy is changing. Why do people care so much about our large lakes? Fresh water is a tremendously important resource. The five lakes that we're familiar with here are 20% of the world's surface fresh water. It's such an important part of our regional heritage. Ice gives us a sense of place, and that is changing over time. We don't want things to get worse, right? And so we have to understand how they work 